thank you to Ford Madrid and thank you for joining us today. Um, here to talk about our project in Saudi Arabia, one of the most notable tourism developments happening in the world right now. And I am grateful for the Ford Madrid team for using two of my photographs on the same slide. You should have asked. Um, so the Red Sea destination, A few years back, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia initiated Vision 2030 uh, in broad brushstrokes. He wanted to drive the, the country to diversify its economy away from uh, carbon fossil fuels. Paramount, big pillar, is growing the local talent and growing the tourism, uh, growing the country, the kingdom, as a tourism destination on a world standard. To enable that, he launched several giga projects. One of them is the Red Sea and Amala. We are aiming to be an exquisite destination, luxury aimed at the upper upscale luxury uh, segment. On the west coast of Saudi Arabia, we were blessed with 28,000 square kilometers of total area, roughly the size of Belgium. Um, we are halfway between Jeddah on the Red Sea coast and uh, Jordan, the port of Aqaba. Um, we've got 200, more than 200 kilometers of coastline. Uh, about 600 kilometers of land borders with the country. We will not be a country within a country. It's just a land given to us, which, will, which is rich with natural resources. Uh, the most pristine uh, coral reef in the region. And we're blessed in that location-wise, we're less than eight hours away from 85% of the global population. So the catchment area is, pre is pretty decent. And we've got year-round moderate weather, unlike other destinations in the GCC where you get peaks and troughs of temperature. Um, in our first phase, opening gradually as of uh, mid next year, we'll start looking, we'll, we'll be offering hyper luxury, luxury lifestyle and premium offerings, five star and above, um, both located on mono islands uh, and inland resorts. Where are we? So, uh, speaking a lot about connectivity, what Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, for those who have not been there, is a massive country. Uh, we travel from our offices in Riyadh to the site. It's an hour and a half away by plane and then an hour drive. So one of the main um, objectives we, we, we decided on is we need to get connected. We need to make it easy for us to be there. Uh, somebody in the audience uh, mentioned remove the friction. So one of the first things we decided to do is remove the friction and allow people from the world to join, to come and visit us. Um, and here's a short overview of our airport, which will also open next year. The airport design is hugely important to any destination, especially here in the Red Sea. Unlike typical airports, which are quite cavernous, we've created a very unique design that really makes for a personalized experience. So the Red Sea came to us and they asked us really to, to do something that was very unusual, very different. So they wanted the airport to be the future of what airports could be, an attempt to try and bring back a sense of luxury into that arrival and, and departure experience. The brief was to create something that no one's ever seen before, something which really stands out and defines the Red Sea experience architecturally. Our vision for the airport design was that it would be informed by nature. We come up with a number of different collaborative ideas and the one I think that everyone felt was actually the most beautiful in its form and shape was very evocative of sand dunes in its curvilinear form. So in terms of sustainability, and there's lots of innovative uh, strategies that we developed. So this here shows the solar path. So in summer the sun uh, starts the day here and it ends the day here. And then in winter it starts here and ends here the whole airport is actually self-shading. Each terminal pod is, is broken down individually. So in low season, one of those could operate as a single um, pod, um, or two could work together, and in high season, the whole airport can work. And that's actually very good for sustainability. Those roofs are basically a four-legged dome with uh, a very large cantilever on the air side the nose of the aircraft, we actually wanted it to sit in underneath the roof of the terminal building. And part of the reason the building is curved is so we've got a number of aircraft that can come in and sit around the edges of the, the building. 
So the dunescape-inspired natural design has allowed us to create a unique experience on arrival. We're using smart technology to create this really, really luxury experience, breaking it down to one minute. So one minute arriving process, uh, one minute departing process. So you can get people to feel like they're flowing through the space rather than being processed. So we took away the air bridge. We felt it was a better approach to bring people off the aircraft and down the steps so they actually smell the air. They get a sense of the temperature. And then we go down into an arrivals garden which is inspired by uh, the Saudi Arabia uh, Wadi experience. And then the passenger flows through a, a short uh, customs immigration. And then arrive at a welcome centre and be escorted then onto their destination. So on departure, the important thing is the moment they arrive at the, at the airport, they can see directly through to the aircraft. There's a direct visual corridor throughout from the drop-off point all the way through right to the plane. It's all about making sure they, they're almost still at the resort when they're at the airport and they're not until they get on that aircraft that they leave the resort. It's such an untouched, beautiful landscape, that opportunity to come in and very sensitively work with nature and create something very beautiful, very unusual, I think is, a, is a, a, an amazing experience, amazing opportunity. We can demonstrate to the rest of the world that you don't have to destroy in order to develop. As one of the speakers just mentioned at the quote from the book that says, the wow of an arrival is thanks to the architect. We have beautiful architecture there and then it's upon us to keep wowing the guests on the way out. Time is luxury, it's not something we take very lightly there. The, this airport is designed to handle a million passengers a year. It's designed without a, a luggage carousel. We plan on receiving our guests and within 12 minutes, have them in their vehicle on the way to the to their resort while we sort out the bags and follow the bags, rush the bags right after them so they can catch the last, they can catch another half hour, they can catch sunset, they can catch whatever it is they need to instead of spending another 30 minutes at the airport waiting for the luggage. Same thing upon departure. Every one of our hotels will have a city terminal built in it so you can check, check your luggage, get your boarding pass at the hotel and you will be taken to the airport just in time when you need to go through security and get on the plane. The luggage would have been taken care of, there's no queuing, maximizing your time at the resort. Oh, I'm going backwards, sorry. There is an image missing. There we are. Okay, so this is a close-up of the Red Sea coast that we have, and you see this lagoon here is 120 kilometers of sea of, of coast. We've got 90 islands in there, and only 22 have been earmarked for uh, development. We are the home for the endangered hawksbill turtle. Uh, we are on the migratory route of birds from Africa to Turkey. We have uh, very fragile marine life, so. This whole destination, the 28,000 kilometers, all the resorts we're building, has been built with preserving and regenerating the environment around us in mind. And that is no easy feat to open, well, phase one, 16 hotels, ultimately end up with 30 hotels and up to a million visitors and be completely off the grid. The entire development will be powered by solar power. Uh, to enable that, we are also building the largest battery park in the world store the energy during the day, power the resort at night. Um, we've partnered with great names to launch and propel our first phase uh, from Fairmont, Jumeirah, Raffles, The Edition, SLS, Intercon, and, and the likes. And there are more to come. Appreciating um, we have a challenge which is putting a, a country that is not known for leisure tourism on the map. Uh, we were discussing this in the, in the breakouts. Saudi comes to, to the world tourism stage from a place of not having been active in that field for a few years now. So we appreciate the, the effort, the whole country is teaming up, us, the Ministry of Tourism, Saudi Tourism Authority, and our partners, the brands, to locate 
the destination on the world stage. The main island will have 11, uh, will have 11 out of the 16 hotels. We've also thought of the, what you do, you, you fly, you stay, you play, and then you leave. And for that, we've got the marinas, the dive centers, um, entertainment, uh, food and beverage, attractions. And then, moreover, we've got the Mono Islands, which offer a Maldivian-style experience um, to the guests. And in our, in our first phase, we will have a St. Regis, the Ritz-Carlton Reserve, and a, a unique architecture island called Chibata. And we've got the desert experience as well. You can't come into Saudi and not experience some of that uh, glorious beauty. Um, appreciating architecture, again, is not the only thing, and hotels are not the only thing, so we've thought up a number of immersive experiences. The de development itself will be um, an accredited dark skies reserve. It's a paint to design, it's a paint to run hotels with dark skies, but that's what we're going for. Dar we, uh, we established, or it's been, we found out that the lighting on our resorts would disorientate the turtles and affect their uh, mating and they're uh, laying the eggs in procreation. So all our, resort, all our resorts will be designed with dark skies policies in mind. This photograph was taken by one of the architects visiting the site and you can see the shimmer of the light on the highway on the left, but from a short distance from any of our developments, you will not get the, the light pollution that you have. Obviously we spoke about dining. Water adventures, the lagoon is rich. It's one of the only growing coral reefs in the world. It's not diminishing, it is growing. Um, to build many of our infrastructure, we've had to relocate corals from their place. We're obsessive about our mangroves. Um, we will not touch mangroves. We'd rather leave an island undeveloped than affect the mangrove. Um, the land is also as rich as the sea. We've got uh, a field of dormant volcanoes which provide great ground for adventure, hiking, trekking, mountain biking and the likes. And you've got, we've got massive nature. Uh, the King Salman Bay, the King, uh, Mohammed bin Salman Private uh, Natural Reserve is on our border. And of course, we're bordered by a number of small towns, uh, villages that have a, the, a cachet and have a lot to offer to the tourists beyond the newly designed and built destination. A bit about regenerative tourism, I've spoken a bit about it, but that is going to be our uh, unique advantage here. Everybody can build a resort, everybody can build an island. Uh, we've, ta we've tackled the environment, we've embraced the environment we're in and have thought about it through every step of every stone that we're setting. Um, and it all started from the design process. We're building as much as we can off-site to reduce the um, footprint, to reduce the number of laborers, construction workers on site, to reduce the number of food that we have to carry and waste and so on. We're using uh, materials as much as we can. We've all taken a pledge, us and our operators, to run our hotels in line with certain strict guidelines. Nothing goes to landfill, zero single-use plastics, all the usual. Plus, in addition, everything is powered through solar energy, no carbon fossil fuel cars in the development. We're also going as far as our supply chain and are picking our goods and supplies out in Jeddah and out in Medina using hydrogen trucks to reduce the carbon footprint of anything that gets brought onto the site. A small video to close with that will give you a better picture. We are breaking new ground. We're thinking differently. Sustainability is no longer enough. As David Attenborough so rightly mentioned in his latest film, we're moving from being apart from nature to becoming a part of nature once again. For us at the Red Sea Development Company, nature is our most valuable asset and our greatest inspiration. The Red Sea Project is located between Al Waj and Umluj on the west coast of Saudi Arabia. in an area comprising a pristine archipelago of 90 islands, teeming with coral and sea life, spectacular mountains, rolling dunes, and even dormant volcanoes. 
our master plan was approved by His Majesty King Salman in 2018. Since then, we've been constantly breaking new ground in building on our promise. And to date, we've awarded key contracts to partners who share our vision. Our hub islands continue to build momentum, created in partnership with some of the world's leading architects and designers. And work on a new international airport, designed by the award-winning architect Foster & Partners, is well underway. The number of workers busy on site is growing by the day. Housed in a new construction village, providing the highest quality accommodation, healthcare and sports facilities. The construction of our coastal village is progressing well. Eventually this will be home to 14,000 people who will work at the destination. Connecting all these locations are the newly completed roads, jetties and causeways. Upskilling young Saudi talent is also our priority. For example, a partnership with the University of Prince Mugrin has provided scholarships for international hospitality management degrees, accredited by École Hôtelier de Lausanne. And 45 Saudis from the local area have been trained to manage our 100 hectare nursery. Conservation is a must. Sustainability, a step in the right direction. Saudi Arabia's groundbreaking vision is coming to reality. But the new frontier for tourism is regeneration. Carbon neutral regenerative development is at the heart of our ambition. And this luxury flagship destination will deliver new standards in hospitality. This is what the Red Sea Development Company is all about. Thank you. It's a minute longer than it should be. It's challenging, it's ambitious. And I look forward to talking to you next year about your visits to the Red Sea when we come here again. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>